Hey everybody, I'm Holly, aka the Scientology Geek, and welcome to a new series. Uh, it's going to be a pretty short one compared to the Student Hat or KSW because it's only 16 pages. But I thought we would take a look at something in the green volumes today called the Computer Series. I don't know much about this, I haven't read it yet, so I'll be reading it with you guys. And we are going to just get an idea of what Hubbard thought about computers. I, being a technical person, I like computers. I have a computer security certification, hoping to get another one relating to IT. Um, but we'll dive into it. Hubbard, back in his day, between 50 and 86, obviously computers were becoming more developed, but they weren't becoming... They weren't as advanced as they are now, obviously, when you had the 80s, you had the Commodore, um, Atari, uh, IBM, I think PC Jr., a bunch of just old computers that were starting to become commercialized for, for home use. So, let's take a look at what Hubbard thought about computers. Alright, we got the... HCO policy letter of the 16th of February, 1984. Okay, so this is just near, just near his death. Two years before his death. Computer Series 1. What is a computer? Computer. An electronic machine for making calculations, storing, and analyzing information fed into it, and controlling machinery automatically. That's from the Oxford American Dictionary. That, simply stated, is what a computer is. A computer is capable of feats just so long as one does not make the mistake that it's thinking. It isn't thinking, but it can sure be made to look like something that thinks. In actual fact, the ones doing the thinking are the computer system designer, the programmer, and the user. Not anymore. Obviously, with artificial intelligence, we can get computers to think. I should mention that what I mean by user is not a typist or someone who simply feeds in data. The user is somebody who knows how to get data into the computer and out of it. He knows that the computer can be made to do work, and he's running that computer for blood. He said the user is not a typist or someone who simply feeds in data. Anyone who uses a computer is a user. I don't know why you need to define this, to redefine this. Operating a computer is not operating a calculator. A computer is not something which eases the work or saves time or permits staff to do other things. That comes under the heading of wasting a computer. A computer should ease work and save time. That's efficiency. Used right, they can dig up and generate income by the steam shovelful and boost efficiency in production to the sky. Again, saves time, eases work. They're a tool with mammoth capabilities. The state of mind to assume in using a computer is, now how can I use this thing to enormously increase the production and income of an area? What's happened on this planet, obviously, is that they think the computer will think, when it can't. And so they don't do enough thinking for the computer in terms of developing uses for it and putting these into action. Back then, again, computers were just starting to become commercialized and used in people's homes. But tons of people have developed uses for computers and put them into action. It's called programming the computer. One point should be mentioned which is very valuable. And that is the speed of operation which can be attained using a computer. The computer can contribute enormously to operational speed in its ability to rapidly relay information over long distances, its ability to keep constant and accurate track of thousands of individual data and actions, and its capacity for rapid data collection and evaluation for action. Saving time. The datum here is that power is proportional to the speed of particle flow. This is the real secret. I love how he doesn't elaborate on this. But, whatever, that's Hubbard for you. Say shit and not explain it. Power is proportional to the speed of particle flow. I mean, he's technically right if you were to interpret that as electrons. This is the real secret behind the prosperity which can arise in connection with a computer operation. Given good ideas, a good heart, a worthwhile project, and the addition of near-instantaneous computer particle flow, the power of an organization becomes almost unlimited. The HCO Policy Letter of the 25th of January, 1969. Computer Series 2 and Target Series 6. Targets and Computers. 
It's interesting to note that my new developments on targets and purposes in recent HCO policy letters are possibly adaptable to computer programming, meaning they apply to and could make a new level of computer action and usefulness. My new developments are adaptable to computer programming. I'm sure they are. Yeah, that's... that's uh, Computer programming is used to solve problems. But he says, meaning they apply to and could make a new level of computer action and usefulness. People knew this before he did. I don't know why he's acting like this is something he just discovered. The HCO policy letter of the 18th of August, 1982, revised the 20th of February, 84. Target series 8 and computer series 3, admin know-how series 42, revised. Targets and production. There's a direct coordination between the clarity and doability of the targets of a program and any increase in stats. If one can write good, simple, doable programs on matters important to get done, they can get done. If the program is cloudy or the target's too general, little comes of it. It does not show up in stats and can even clutter up lines and impede production. So it's very important to an exec and to staffs that the exec be able to write clean, concise programs and staffs to recognize when they're not and plead for correction. Strategic planning gets bugged most often because middle management does not put it in target form, or if they do, put it in such cloudy or general targets it cannot be done and does not achieve the desired result. Faults in this can cost, factually, millions in unmade income or actual losses in overwork. But now today, another factor is entering the scene. The world has gone computer. Computers can keep track of things and operate to catch things which, undone, wreck things. In a very short while at this writing, computers will exist at management echelons to keep track of stats, demand programs, and keep track of their effectiveness. The computer will be able to detect very early non-compliance both in writing and getting done programs. Life will be much smoother as debugs will be demanded more quickly and bad targets or line jams or staff overloads will be detected sooner and remedied, resulting in more income, more service, and more pay. But all this will depend on three things. Number one, the existence and soundness of the strategic planning and evaluation. This has never been much in doubt. Two, the clarity with which planning can be programmed. This is currently not good at all. Three, the execution of targets called for at various echelons and staff level. This depends to a large measure on two above. To a computer which cannot really think, a target's a target. If not done in the expected time, it will squawk. If still not done, it will demand a debug. The debug will find that A, the organization ordered did not give it to a correct or the right staff member to do, B, had no one there to do it, or C, the target was simply neglected at staff level, or D, the target was undoable in its existing form. The right one will be found, action will be taken, and the overall scene will advance once more. So it's very important, whether one's writing major, minor, or mini programs, that they be written absolutely on policy from here on out. This starts now, not waiting for computers as it's valid in its own right and programs ops are on the line. With computers, there will still be programs ops to run them, but the precision and speed will increase amazingly. The organizations in this world are getting bigger. They have to be more efficient to also pay well. They don't pay well at all. And this all comes down to the one, two, three above. It's a miserable thing to be hit with a lot of confused, undoable orders and dangerous to one at staff level for one can be charged with non-compliance when there was really nothing precise to comply with. So the ability to coordinate programs and write excellent target policy targets is vital to the ability of all to do work. And when computers get on the job, electronic sparks will be flying all over the place if target policy is not adhered to carefully and precisely. So this policy is vital, computers or no computers. Operating targets must hereafter be written in such a way that they are finite and not a generality, so they're precisely doable. Targets like keep stats rising or be nice to Joe are not doable targets from a computer's viewpoint or anybody else's. But computers aside, the one that does the target is not a computer and with target clarity can do it far more easily. Hear me, the one, two, three above are the make break point of expand or not expand, so heed it. I mean, you've had exact programs doesn't change how shitty your organization is doing nowadays. Oh, we're going to be talking about Incom. Okay. This is the HCO policy letter of the 23rd of November, 1985. Wow, this is just three months before his death. Wow. 
Computer Series 4, INCOM. INCOM is the International Network of Computer Organized Management. Purpose and Product. INCOM's purpose is to establish and operate a major international management computer system which enforces the standard application of Scientology policy and technology, and as a result, brings about rapid planetary expansion. INCOM's product is developed, distributed, maintained, and properly used computerized management systems which enormously increase the production and income of an area. INCOM researches, develops, tests, and implements operating programs for the international management computer system. All such computer programs must be based solidly on the principles of organization, operation, and management found in policy letters, executive directives, and other written and taped source materials on these subjects. INCOM has the responsibility of ensuring the stats, reports, and other data put into its computer banks are true and verified. It polices and cross-checks incoming data and isolates false data and false stats and corrects. Organization. As a Sea Org unit, INCOM is subject to and operates on Sea Org policy as found in flag orders, central bureau orders, etc., as well as OEC policy. It's part of Church of Scientology International. There are representatives of INCOM posted outside its central headquarters whose duty is to see that the computer systems in their assigned areas are kept functioning properly, to see that users are correctly hatted, and to police in standard, on-policy use of the computer system. INCOM has the authority to take any needed steps to ensure that those who are supposed to use INCOM computers are thoroughly hatted in computer use, and that they then do put the computers to work to greatly increase production. Policy the design and structure of all INCOM computer programs and systems are based on the third dynamic tech of Scientology, as contained in the OEC volumes and other source works. Any INCOM staff member who designs, produces, or implements a computer program or system that is at variance with Scientology policy while calling it Scientology, or one which uses Scientology while attributing it to some other source, may be called before a COMEV and charged with high crimes. See this policy letter, suppressive acts, suppression of Scientology and Scientologists. Such action can also result in disciplinary measures taken by the Inspector General Network for the purpose of enforcing the trademarks of Scientology and Dianetics. Equipment. INCOM is responsible for the computer equipment used in its network. It directs what equipment is to be used and sees to its correct installation, upkeep, upgrade, and repair, and ensures that users are thoroughly hatted on its use and care. Computer users are themselves fully responsible for the use and care of any computer equipment assigned to them. It's a very strict requirement that anyone using computer equipment be fully hatted on its care and use, and it is INCOM's responsibility to see that this hatting occurs. Computer equipment is signed out to a specific user who is thereafter responsible for it. See the policy letter, The Equipment of Organizations. Authority of INCOM Computer Programs While INCOM's authority extends to its own personnel and network, and to ensuring that its computers are fully and standardly utilized by staff and execs, the authority of INCOM computer programs is a different matter. INCOM computers are programmed under the direct supervision of and monitored closely by senior management. And these programs are designed to be able to originate orders but also take steps to get them complied with. For example, if an INCOM computer program detects that compliance to a target assigned to a particular staff member is overdue, the computer program can nudge the target, issue an ethics chit for noncompliance, per the policy letter staff member reports, and if compliance is still not received, order further ethics actions per policy. In originating or following up on such orders, the computer is actually executing what its programmers have set it up to do, per OEC policy. Orders and other communications issued by an INCOM computer program are therefore valid and stem from the authority of senior management, authorized by AVC, and governed by existing policy on compliance. Background the power and capabilities of computers are almost unlimited. Unfortunately, the existing state of administration in the society today is so poor that most computers, no matter how fancy their circuitry, are being wasted. Computers end up being used only for counting up how much tax someone has to pay or predicting how many auto accidents will occur next year. But I'll let you in on a little known fact. On the track, real computers, not Earth's current home or business entertainment toys, have successfully administered whole planets. They actually were able to do work. They were not merely consoles and recorders that a person punched data into so that they would spit the data back at him. The point here is that this planet's current popular concept of how to use a computer would make a baby laugh. It's a bit like using a nuclear reactor to boil water, which is also being done on the planet at this time. It's not used to boil water, it's used 
to create steam to power the nuclear react to power the nuclear generators, the energy generators. Future, but this is going to change. Today's current Stone Age computers will be updated with new computer technology. Sounds odd, but that's it. The use of one will become real for blood, doing work and getting work done use which this planet has never seen, though seen on other planets. Additionally, something actually new will be done. Real computers will be applied to Scientology management. They're being programmed based on OEC policy and bulletins and will have something to operate on which is very sane, logical, and pro-survival. The potentials of the whole track computer will be harnessed to the tremendously powerful administrative policy of Scientology to help get that policy in and increase production. Give an executive a few investigations and evaluations and these whole track computer operations and that computers give an executive a few investigations and evaluations and these whole track computer operations and the computers and programs and let him use them to apply Scientology and the potential is there to send stats out through the top of the solar system and on a planet in the shape this one is in there's no time to lose in doing so getting a real computer network factual and functioning is about the same order of importance and magnitude as sending for a fire truck Incom is depended on and is there to get that job done. Now, Chris Shelton did a video on Incom, which I will actually uh, put a link to in the description below. He went into a lot of detail about it and how much of a disaster it turned out to be. Urgent, important, admin high crime from the policy letter of the 10th of July, 1986, issue 3. This is after Hubbard died. It references high crime... High crime checkouts and word clearing, keep an admin working, and word clearing method 4. With this issue, checkouts on policy by all administrative personnel become mandatory. It's long been policy that technical personnel study, word clear, and star rate checkout on any technical materials before they apply those materials on their jobs. Pro auditors and interns at any level study, word clear, and check out on the processes there to run in session. Supervisors and word clearers star rate on the basic materials of study tech and word clearing before they're allowed to deliver Scientology courses. And as new materials are issued, the qual division sees to it that the tech delivery personnel to whom the materials apply get them checked out immediately. Such checkouts have come to be known as high crime checkouts from the title of the policy letter which brought them into being, high crime. And it's through the use of such checkouts that tech application is safeguarded and kept in step with the latest technical discoveries and advances. Tech people take great pride in keeping on top of their subjects in this way. Understandably so, for when they do, the results they achieve are consistent and spectacular. Miracles are the order of the day. The public pour in for service. The organization thrives. Where tech terminals don't know and use their materials, results are only anxiously hoped for. The public come in for service reluctantly where they can be coaxed in at all, and the organization dwindles. High crime checkouts on policy letters. Just as there's standard tech, so is their standard admin. The fact is that any organization can be seen to fail when standard administrative policy is not known and used by its people, and every successful organization will be found to be composed of people who do know and do apply the basic principles found in our policy letters. Therefore, the following is classified as a high crime. Neglecting, advising against the application of, failing to enforce or tolerating the omission of standard word clearing and star rate checkouts on all new or newly revised HCO policy letters, as well as the key HCOPLs of the basic staff member hat and the key policies of the staff member's specific assigned post by every staff member. In the C organization, this applies to LRH CBOs, Central Bureau Orders, actually. In the C organization, this applies to LRH Central Bureau Orders and Flag Orders, as well as HCO policy letters. Staff Member Responsibility once an exec or staff member has completed study of his hat by proper check sheet, he should report to the SSO and qual to be word cleared method 4 and star rate checked out on the key policies of his staff member hat as well as those policies specifically relating to his post. And when any new policy is issued relating to his post or which is an essential part of his hat as a staff member, he must get it word cleared, checked out, and into application immediately. Such checkouts can be done by qual personnel or by another staff member on a twinned basis. They must be tough, standard, star rate checkouts which consult the staff member's understanding and demand that he demonstrate his ability to apply the material. Staff on technical posts are included under this policy as they're responsible for their hats as staff members. Qual responsibility. The SSO must alert all staff of new or revised LRH policies received, must keep a log of policies checked out by each staff member just as a log is kept for technical. 
He must ensure that this is done within a matter of days of receipt of the issue, not allowed to drag out so that a backlog accumulates. The SSO is responsible for determining which policies are to be checked out by which staff and logging them under the staff member's name in his checkout log. He should coordinate with the HCO hatting officer in making such determinations and in getting the checkouts done. Violations. The MAA or ethics officer in investigating any post or area with down statistics must include an inspection of the qual checkout log entries for the persons in the area being investigated. Where violations of this policy are found, the matter is reported to the HCO Area Secretary. The HCO Area Secretary must at once order a full and searching investigation into any persons who might have instigated it and report the matter with all particulars to the HCO Executive Secretary. The HCO Exec Sec must then convene a COMEV with the persons accused as interested parties and must locate amongst them any SPs. When so located, they're duly declared as suppressive by HCO ethics orders and dismissed. If any ethics officer, director of inspections or, and reports, or HCO area sec cannot obtain cooperation by superiors in carrying out this policy quickly, a report must be handed to the LRH communicator directly with a copy sent to the Inspector General Network via flag. The LRH comm must act swiftly and effectively to handle the matter with proper justice action, reporting actions taken and results on LRH communicator network lines to LRH comm international with a copy to the Inspector General Network. Computer Verification INCOM will be preparing a computerized system to verify that this policy is in force in every organization and to call for HCO ethics action where it's found to be out. With standard admin known and conscientiously in use on every post, the game is ours. This is... This one was extremely boring for me. And how many pages was it? It was one, two, three... It was only three pages? Holy shit, it felt like it took forever. Anyway... All right, we'll skip to the HCO policy letter of the 29th of February, 84, just about a month after Hubbard died. This is Computer Series 6, Computer Ethics Points. As they're vital tools in forwarding the rapid expansion of Scientology, there has to be ethics about computers. Therefore, the following are classified as crimes. Misfiling in a computer. Not filing in a computer. In other words, it's against the law not to feed it. Putting false data into a computer. Making corrections to something and invalidating the data in a computer. What if something needs corrections made to? Failing to keep a computer clean and in repair. Running a computer without fully checking out and star rating on it. Permitting unauthorized access to a computer. Allowing dampness and or magnetic fields in the vicinity of a computer. Not using a computer once it's installed. Pretending difficulties with a computer that do not exist. Failure to recruit competent people to run a computer. All justice policy applies, including ignorance of these regulations, which is no excuse, as well as the policy letter knowledge reports. Knowledge reports written on any of the above crimes are routed per existing policies on staff member reports, but with an additional copy forwarded to income computer banks. Any of these crimes may be reclassified as high crimes if the offense or offenses are severe or repeated. The computer is a tool, and like any other tool, it can be misused or abused or neglected. Used properly and within ethics, a computer system can be formidable and bring about prosperity. After all, flourishing and prospering is what Scientology is all about. Not. No. Flourishing and prospering is the opposite of Scientology. Policy letter of the 18th of August, 1982, issue 2, Computer Series 7, Computers, Danger of Relying on. 1. Lack human values. 2. They work on data fed them, and that data... I think I meant fed to them. And that data not only can be corrupted, but is in a large percentage false. What do you mean by that? The computer cannot detect false or imperfect data saved by the system of considering repeated reports correct. All one has to do is feed a computer the same report in several versions, and it finds it correct. There are various intelligent systems of evaluating data, and all of them are extremely faulty. The computer is no better than the organization that feeds it. That seems like an accurate statement. All right. And that was the end of the computer series. And I think this is the shortest one that I have. Um, if I find anything shorter, we're going to read it. Obviously, we're going to read everything. But I want to thank all of you guys for watching this. Um, I did want to say, as of, I want to say it was yesterday, which is May, uh, March 11th, I reached over 100 subscribers. Knowing that a hundred people are interested in this content and that I can be the one to provide it for them 
it means a lot. I want to thank all of you for sticking with me through this slow development of my channel. It's still slow, but it's still going. And I hope you all stick around with me for much more. If you know anybody who's into cults or Scientology and who happens to be an outsider or even an insider, have them take a look at my channel. Thank you all. Like if you like the video, dislike if you don't, comment with any feedback or questions you have, good, bad, or sideways, and subscribe to be kept up to date on future content. I'll talk to all of you later. See ya.